Hello and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on ThinkTech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, owner of Kathleen Lee Consulting, and I am your host for this program. ThinkTech Hawaii is currently live streamed on thinktechhawaii.com as well as on ThinkTech Hawaii's Facebook and YouTube channel. And if you are watching us right now and would like to send in a question, you may email us at questions at thinktechhawaii.com. Today, we have a very exciting guest on the show, uh, Kelsey Ann Mamizuka, owner of Blissful Occasions. So Kelsey, welcome to the show. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Uh, tell our viewers about yourself before we launch into Blissful Occasions. So who is Kelsey? Hi, so uh, my name is Kelsey Ann Mamizuka. I'm from the North Shore of Oahu in a little town called Kahuku. Um, I graduated here and I went off to college in Oregon. I have some background in biology and I graduated and I came back home in 2020 in the midst of COVID-19 um, and moved back home. And I didn't know what was next for me, um, but I got a job with home care. So right now I'm a personal caregiver for the elderly. Um, so that's my day job. Um, so, I wanted something a little bit more, um, something that will take my mind off of caring for other people because it can be a lot um, doing hospice and home care um, and dealing with, you know, seeing an elderly. So I wanted to a creative outlet for myself. So uh, at the time I was dating somebody and he uh, planned this date, uh, had no idea what he was doing. He just picked me up and he took me to the beach and um, he had everything all planned out for me. And I was, it was so great. And that's what really inspired me to start Blissful Occasions is I thought it was such a great idea to have a picnic set up for you in the middle of the beach. Um, and it was very romantic and I wanted to share that with other people. So that's what birth um, Blissful Occasions. I love that. I love that your inspiration is from a date. See, um, if you have that entrepreneurial mindset, inspiration co can come from anywhere. So Kelsey, let us launch into that blissful occasions, picnics in paradise. What is that? And if we could pull up some photos um, so people have an idea of what exactly it is that you do. Yeah, so um, I specialize in event planning, uh, especially small event planning for couples, so date nights, um, I do proposals, um, and just because there, you don't really need a reason to take your special person out. Um, so this is a great way for you and your partner to you know, have some alone time and really reconnect, especially now with stressful times. Um, this was a great way. A lot of my couples loved it. They had, you know, they were able to decompress with each other and relax and really enjoy each other's company. So that's what I do. And it doesn't have to just be couples. Um, I also do group planning. I have group parties. Um, so like bridal showers, baby showers, um, small elopement parties, um, and people who just come on vacation. That is awesome. What is the, um, let's go over this. What is the smallest number of people that you've hosted? I'm guessing two, right? No, smallest actually, number and then the largest number that you're able yeah. to accommodate with your company. So, it was really awesome. There's this one lady who just wanted to do a self care. She just wanted to take herself out. Um, so she just wanted to have a nice little um, dinner on the beach with herself really because she just wanted to enjoy herself and really be enjoy her alone time. So that was really fun. And I was really inspired by that. Someone who could take themselves out and treat themselves. Um, that self-care, you really, man, you need that. Um, so the smallest party was one, um, and the largest party I've done was about 28, and it was a birthday party. And man, it was, they were, they were so much fun to have. Um, they were so kind. And although it was a big party and it just, it was just me at the time, um, they were so kind and uh, made the process a lot easy for me. Yeah. I'm glad I asked you that question because I, again, you know, like if it weren't for that, I would have automatically assumed that your smallest number was two. But mm -hmm. like to know that someone decided to just, you know, have someone else, right? And a whole nother company set up a picnic for, you know, like himself or herself. Like that's great. I think that is absolutely wonderful. Kelsey, how did you come up with the name of Blissful Occasions? <laughs> like I love it. It's so, so idealistic and like mm -hmm. it's just cool. But how did you come up with it? 
Yeah, so like I said, um, so that partner I told you about that um, planned that date for me, um, we're, to, we're still together and he is my inspiration for my picnics. Um, and so on that date that he set up for me, that's basically the feeling that I got was so blissful. Like the sun was setting, we were talking, we had lunch. It was, it was awesome. So I really like was falling in love <laughs> um oh. that technique so it was great and so I was like why can't I I can set this up for other people and see if they feel blissful about this or with their partner or with their family so blissful occasions does not have to just be for couples it could just be with your family you can be blissful with your families too yeah and friends family and friends I think that that's wonderful so walk us through how you started the business. Um, I understand that you started this like around the, like in last year, right? Yes. Last year at the beginning of the year. So walk us through how you started it, how you built the business and where it currently is. Great. So about a week after that day that he set up for me, um, I was talking it over with my parents and my family. And I was like, wow, this is such a, like, a great business idea. And my mom was like, you should get an LLC. So she helped me with the, through the process of getting an LLC through Hawaii. So I got my LLC like two weeks after the date and it was running already. So I was like, I wanted everything to be official. I didn't want to, you know, um, be under the table. If I got caught like at a beach or I'm not supposed to, I wanted to make sure all my paperwork was good. Um, so that, um, uh, Having the LLC, I, I feel a lot of people um, trust the company more because you have rules and regulations you have to abide by. Um, and after I got my LLC, I put up Facebook Marketplace, some ads, I made an Instagram, and I've been pretty much booked out since um, March of last year. So a lot of the times I do weekends, um, I opened up to weekdays. Um, so I want to say on a monthly, um, in 30 days, I would get about 15 to 20 inquiries and about eight to 12 actual bookings, um, mostly weekends um, and some weekdays. Oh, that's, that's, that is so awesome. That's such a clever business idea as well. Um, you, so you do, according to your photos, it looks like the setup includes food, um, like the linens, right? The tables and the venue. Like, tell us more about that. Like, where, where does the food for the, the occasions come from? Yeah, so um, I go through uh, this restaurant, Hawaii Steaks. Um, they are located all over the island, um, especially the hot spots of where I go and do my setup. So there's Ala Moana, there's Pro City, there's um, Kapolei. So I order food there um, and then take it to my setups and set up everything for them. And if they have like any food limitations, allergies, I go through an alternative. Um, Latour Cafe has, great, has a great alternative menu um, for those who are vegan or um, don't really eat meat. So I go mostly through them. Um, I've also catered through a lot of other um, restaurants, um, not as often, but mostly the Hawaii Steaks and the Latour Cafe. I also work with um, two bakers, and uh, they're both women, and they're so their their treats are so awesome. It's uh, Chrissy Rich to create uh, pastries. She's located in um, Kanyohe. She makes awesome stuff, um, as well as Shania. Baked by Shania is her Instagram handle, and she's located in Kapule. Man, they have, like, all of my clients, when they have birthday parties or they just want, like, a treat, like, for a dessert, their pieces are awesome. They're amazingly decorated, and they taste great. Yeah, that's great. Are, do people pick from a set or, like, a set of menus or is every single event does every single event have a customized menu right so when they inquire to have a i have a form a google form they could see the dessert menu and the food menu that i have to offer um otherwise i would ask them if they have any requests because some people want steak and lobster uh, but i don't really have steak and lobster on my menu but that's all included. The food is um, included in the picnic. So if they have a special place that they want or, um, you know, a couple really likes a pizza place, but they don't really like local food, I would totally go get them the pizza. Um, but I do have a menu for them to pick off of if they have, um, if they don't have any preferences. 
That that's so cool. What is the most popular menu item that you have discovered so far that people like? Right. Like for their special occasions. Right. Special uh, so occasions. A lot of um, the couples I have, they like the mixed plates. It's either the garlic shrimp and the like. It's kind of like a mochiko chicken style um chicken with rice and salad they love that um and the second most popular is like smoked meat a lot of people visiting they don't know what that is so it's they want to try something different and when i go and clean up after the end of the picnic all of their food is gone and so that's a good sign that they enjoyed it <laughs> <laughs> that's great um as far as venues go i know your like or your instagram mentions like beaches and, and parks mm -hmm. how are those locations determined is it through you do you give uh, people who inquire a list of places or um, do they tell you, hey, this is where I want to do something. Can you go over there? Yeah, so both. Um, I Like I said, with the food menu, I also have a list of locations that I am very familiar with and I know, you know, the rules and regulations um, about their parks and their beaches. Um, but if they do have um, a request on where they want their picnic to be, I am more than welcome to accommodate for that. Um, but uh, most of the people that I have, they are visiting, so they don't really know a lot of the locations. So I have handpicked. So Koalina Lagoons, Ala Moana, um, and Kalailoa Nimitz Beach, and all of those places are public beaches. You don't need any, you don't have to pay for parking, or there's not a lot of limitations there. So yeah, it's great. Would you say the locations that you mentioned are some of the most, the more popular ones? And what's the most popular one so far that you have discovered through your business? Yeah. Oh man, it's kind of hard because a lot of the visitors, they love all Moana Beach Park. Um, a lot of my locals um, from Hawaii, they know that Kalailoa Beach Park or Nimitz Beach is a little bit, there's not a lot of people who know about it. So that a lot of the locals like that beach. Um, and then it's a half and half between visitors and locals who like Koalina because if you've ever been to Koalina, the lagoons there are gorgeous and they have a beautiful sunset there. So I can't, I can't say which one is most popular because I'm driving to, to Almoana, to Kapolei or Koalina and then back to Kapolei for Nimitz Beach. So I'm kind of all over the place. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you must be like really familiar with all these like venues where you can set up at this point, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because they are outdoor venues, I'm sure you ran into some challenges when it comes to weather. So what types of contingency plans are available in the event that it rains or it gets super windy? Right, yes. Hawaii weather, man, you think that we have perfect weather all year round, but we really don't. Um, so there was a few times where we got rained out. Um, one couple loved it. They thought it was so romantic that they were dancing in the rain. Um, but then there's some people who just couldn't stand the, the rain. Um, so I offer them, um, you know, either a, a refund so they get their money back, or we can plan for a different day with no extra charge. We'll just we'll just take what we have and clean up everything, and then plan for a better day. Um, so yeah, I either offer a full refund or um, rescheduling. Yeah, I like that. I, I like that there is a plan in place. Um, we are going to go on break, but when we return, Kelsey will go over some of the challenges that you may have faced when starting up your business, especially during this time in, in our history, as well as some lessons that you've learned and future plans for the company. So hope everyone stays tuned. We'll be right back. On April 1st, at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, Think Tech will be presenting a 90-minute webinar panel program called Burning Global Issues. This will be an examination of six continents by thought and community leaders living in or expert in those continents, discussing burning issues affecting each of them, how they relate to the prospects for functioning democracy, and what we can learn from all of that. The moderator for the program is Pamela Spratlin a 30-year foreign service veteran who has served as U.S. ambassador and consular official in a number of overseas posts. The panel is comprised of Carl Baker, Senior Advisor of Pacific Forum on China and Asia, Rupmati Khandakar, Director of Global Relations Forum on India, Elsa Jark Hadian, a consultant with Project Expedite Justice on the Middle East, Gilbert Nuagira, an economist in Kampala, Uganda on East Africa, Carl Ackerman, 
of the Social Studies Faculty at Punahou School, on Eastern Europe, and Juan Tello, a business attorney in Bogota, Colombia, on Latin America. The program is sponsored by Project Expedite Justice. We hope you will attend, and that this program will help you better understand these important global issues. Please go to our website, thinktechhawaii.com, and register. Mahalo. Welcome back to Connecting Hawaii Business on ThinkTech Hawaii. On the show, we have Kelsey Ann Mamizuka, owner of Blissful Occasions, Picnics in Paradise. So Kelsey, when we left off, you were talking about um, contingency plans in the event of inclement weather. Let's talk about the demographic. Who have you discovered uh, has been reaching out to you as far as like patterns go? So mostly young people, like older individuals, groups, birthday parties. How's that been working out? Um, so majority, surprisingly, is the boyfriends or husbands, and they want to plan something special for their wives or ask um, a girl to be their girlfriend or propose to their girlfriend. Um, and it's it's a lot of fun planning because that's what my partner did, but except he didn't plan it through somebody else. He did it all on his own. And I know for guys, planning and doing like that deep thought and, and putting all these details together isn't really their thing. So I kind of want to make it easy for them um, and make the process a lot easier for them. So I want to say uh, majority is male and they're on the younger side. So between 18 and, and 30 is like my high demographic. And they're either planning something for their wives, girlfriends, or they're soon to be fiancés. Wow. See, every time I ask about a demographic, I always get surprised because then I have like these assumptions in my head mm -hmm. and I love how they're always uh, challenged or countered by something like I wouldn't have expected. Like I would imagine, I guess for me, because like I, I would figure like women love picnics, right? Everyone loves picnics, but as far as like organization goes, you know, <laughs> it's so when you're like, okay, these, these husbands and these boyfriends, like, arranged I think it's wonderful have you done engagements as well like engagement proposals yes I've actually the month of February and December where I, I've had like three or four proposals in a weekend in a weekend and wow. I was, it was amazing like hint hint boyfriend but it was awesome and and all the girls of course they said yes and they were they were just in they were in bliss <laughs> <laughs> name but yeah they were it was awesome and I could tell that they loved it and um and when I came back all they could say was thank you and they had so much fun and that it was perfect the, the men always come back to me and they said this was perfect oh do you also um do you also make arrangements with photographers so that the event is documented in the event that someone wants that option Yes. So right now um, I have a contract with her name is Christy O O U um, and her photography business is taking off. She, she captures the moment and it's beautiful. So once I actually met her at Ala Moana beach park and I had a setup for my couple there and just taking photos and she said, Hey, can I photograph your setup and I said why not like I don't have anybody taking professional photos right now and I'm using my iPhone why not like what what the heck and then when she sent me the pictures and they were stunning like the, the quality was so great compared to my iPhone and I was like these these are perfect so um I got her contact she got my contact and we started emailing we, we drafted up a contract and so now um when uh boyfriends, husbands, or people who come and inquire to book about a picnic, I definitely drop her name. And if it's something special and they want to capture the moment, um, I definitely drop her name. Yes. Isn't that, isn't that amazing how the universe always conspires in your favor? Here you are with a setup and suddenly a photographer comes along and now you're in a partnership, <laughs> in a business partnership with this, you know, other like business owner. I think that is awesome. So let's go over how you started your business. It was in March. Um, were there any challenges that you ran into, especially since there was a pandemic? There still is. But, you know, like at that time, we were still trying to get familiarized with the vaccines and, you know, all that other stuff. What were some challenges as a business owner that you ran into starting this in 2021? Some of the challenges were finding somebody, bookkeeping, I should say, bookkeeping. 
Um, I, like I said, I have a background in biology. I have no background in sales or merchandise or um, services like, like this one, like I set up. Um, so really just holding on to receipts and bookkeeping and tracking everything um, was something I had to learn on my own. And especially now tax season is coming up. I definitely want to utilize it um, and learn more um, this will be my first tax season with a business. So definitely learning um, and doing your research about um, your small business and you know all of those, um, those tax write-offs and stuff, they're very important, especially if you want to have a profitable, profitable business. Let's, let's go into that. You've already sort of touched upon the next question. What are some lessons that you have learned during the pandemic? Lessons I've learned to be very clear with your clients. Um, you know, if if a date doesn't work out, uh, I try not to overpromise them. Um, like, yeah, I can definitely do three bookings in a day. I'm just one person, and I can't oversell or overpromise um, certain things. So definitely saying no or rescheduling for a different time or opening up a date for another um, day. Um, lessons is definitely to not wear myself thin. I am just one person and doing all the paperwork and planning and driving and setting up and cleaning up. Um, so I have to give myself grace on that. <laughs> yes. That is a great note for everyone out there, whether you are an entrepreneur or, or just someone who um, is like looking for a ba fine balance when it comes to work, right? Work and, and everything else and make sure to always take care of yourself. What about future plans. What do you have coming up in the future? And I know you mentioned beach cleanups as well, and I would love for you to go into that and how you would like to tie that in with your business. Yeah, of course. So like I said, a lot of my picnics I set up at beaches, um, Kualina, Kualoa, and Ala Moana Beach Park. I've done other beaches as well. Um, but being a local, um, I definitely want to malama our aina and take care of what we have. Although I set up these beautiful picnics. I want to teach people and show them the and how to respect our land because, you know, a lot of people don't really understand like cleaning up their trash, especially after a, a fun beach day. Yes, it's a lot of fun, um, but really taking care of our oceans, our beaches and our land is very important, especially um, as a native here in Hawaii. Um, so I definitely am planning soon to reach out back to my local, a clientele that I have and to set up some ads for my future clients who are planning to inquire and book a picnic that soon, sooner than later I will have a beach cleanup um, at each of those locations that I go to um, and just to learn and clean up after ourselves and teaching people to malama our aina. I'm looking forward to when that launches. Um, any other future plans that are coming up that you're thinking of? Yeah, so right now um, I am drafting up. It's in the works to uh, partner up with some hotels and give personal experiences to their guests. Um, uh, I have a few hotels here on the North Shore and um, because I set up so much at Colina, hopefully to connect with the right people there and um, uh, have a contract with them to give their guests some personal experiences like picnics on their beautiful beaches. Great idea, especially with everything opening back up. Kelsey, is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, no, not really. Oh, actually, yes. Um, so in the future, you guys, um, for those young people who are coming up and want to be entrepreneurs, um, even though there are 50 other million ideas um, that are out there and being marketed, they don't have you, they don't have your uniqueness. And so if you think, hey, um, this product is already out there, like why would I sell it more? They, you're, they're not selling the product, they're selling you and what you have to offer. So um, I'm not the only picnic business out there, but I still started my business knowing that there's other picnic business and um, I don't see them as competitors, but to see that I'm giving my experiences and my, you know, knowledge and my, you know, um, my, what is it called? My attitude, my, um, my little shake on things and make it unique. So make your business unique and you can definitely do it.
I genuinely appreciate your collaborative and growth mindset. And thank you for sharing those words. I hope, you know, people take that to heart. Um, how can people get a hold of you and Blissful Occasions? And we can, if we can pull up the website. Yeah. So you can follow me at Blissful Occasions on Instagram. Um, I have a lot of my uh, media up on there. I have a lot of my updates posted there mostly, most of the time. Um, and you can also inquire and find my booking link there. Um, and my official site will be dropping soon. Great. That, this, is, this has been really awesome, Kelsey. Thank you so much for educating us about your business, how you came about it, and what you can do for people out there, especially since summer is coming up, um, COVID restrictions are loosening. There are so many ways to, for people to be able to come to you and be like, hey, I would love to hold a blissful occasion for a loved one or for myself. So thank you again for coming on the show today. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Of course. And we also want to thank Jay Fidel and the entire staff at Think Tech Hawaii for making shows like this possible. We had Max and Haley who helped us out for today's show. So thank you so much. And until next time, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.